At this moment, I would like to speak about my own experience and the lower surgery that I had completed. This seems to be a top popular topic and one that people often have questions about. Uh, so if someone's transitioning from female to male, there are two predominant <coughs> lower surgery procedures that people may choose from. There are other options as well, that's why I say it's too predominant, and I'm just going to focus on those today. Uh, the first one is something called a metoidioplasty procedure, um, and you can get a, what's called scrotoplasty and urethral lengthening and vaginectomy with that. And then the other one is called a phalloplasty procedure that also could include the uh, scrotoplasty, urethral lengthening, vaginectomy, and uh, erectile rod implants. So those are the two options. So what's the difference? The metoidioplasty procedure uses your natural tissue. All right. Um, up to six to eight weeks in utero, we are all estrogen-based. So when I say in utero, up to six to eight weeks in our development as a fetus. At that time, um, an SRY gene gets passed down saying to this tissue, hey, you're going to be developing male, here's a right chromosome, the androgens come in, and that tissue starts developing to male. So what this means is that we all come from the same parts. Uh, so clitoral tissue is the same thing as penile tissue. It's erectile tissue, okay? They come from the same place. Uh, when a trans man's on testosterone, that testosterone will affect the clitoral tissue, meaning that it will help increase its size and its girth. That does not mean that it creates a full-size penis. It does not mean that you're going to have full girth, all right? And you cannot create sperm. That's just not possible. But the testosterone will increase its length exterior, uh, on the exterior. Uh, this clitoral tissue runs between three to five inches inside the body. And so with the testosterone affecting that tissue, it's going to help the surgeon determine if they're able to be able to do what's called the metoidoplasty procedure. So what they do with the metoidoplasty is they clip the ligaments that hold it in place. All right. So essentially it's held in place Within the body, they clip those ligaments so it's released away from the body. My surgeons then, uh, in Belgrade, used a piece of my interior cheek to create a urethral extension. So that's a little tubular tissue uh, that runs through the penis. And hopefully, if all works correctly and you don't have complications, you'll then be able to successfully pee standing up. So they create that urethral extension and then they attach that to your old urethra. All right. Then they used your what's called the labia minora tissue or the inside area of what's called the vulva and they created the penile shaft all right the labia minora tissue and penile skin is the same stuff it comes from the same place same look feel consistency uh, the surgeons will do what's called a vaginectomy or a closure of the vaginal canal and then they take some silicone implants and place those with what's called the labia majora tissue all right and that creates a two-part scrotum. Um, and if you heal right, and if your body accepts the implants properly, uh, you will have a small but very pleasing, I don't know, say package, all right? Uh, with the metoidoplasty, what are the drawbacks? The drawbacks are that you do have a small penis, all right? Uh, some surgeons refer to them as like a microphallus, meaning a smaller penis. So flaccid, you could be between an inch to three inches at most. Uh, flaccid, three inches would be pretty big. And when you are becoming aroused, of course, that erectile tissue, blood flows into that tissue, so it does increase in size and girth. And you can be a maximum of, um, well, it's usually between uh, two to, again, three maybe pushing three and a half, but not likely, all right, uh, erect. So the one drawback really is, is just the size. And I know that a lot of guys may choose to do the metoidoplasty procedure um, and then later on decide, you know what, I, this was nice, but I think I'd really like to move forward and have what's called the phalloplasty. The phalloplasty is the creation of a full-size penis. Uh, in order to do that, though, they're going to have to use a donor site on your body. They're going to use skin from someplace else on your body. Some surgeons will do what's called a radio forearm flap, which is removal of a skin, rectangular piece of your skin on the underside from your forearm. And then they'll shave a piece of your thigh 
uh, and run that through a machine to make it kind of look like uh, the skin you'd put on a burn victim and place that on top of your forearm uh, so that that skin can regenerate, but you do have what looks kind of like a third degree burn on your arm here. Other surgeons who do the radio forearm flap, like the surgeons in London, uh, they will use a full graft from your butt, butt cheek. So they take a full piece of your skin, uh, all the layers there, and place it on your arm uh, to help with that size and to reduce the scarring that you see. Uh, so that's an option with radio forearm. Other surgeons, like the surgeons I went to in Belgrade, if they were to do a phalloplasty, they would do one that's right here, it's the latissimus dorsi flap. So they take your skin here, and then they pull that skin together, so then you have a scar that kind of runs like this, and they create your phalloplasty from that. All right. Uh, other surgeons may use what it's called, it's called a suitcase handle. So they create it from your abdominal region, and they have the little flap there, it looks a little bit like a suitcase handle, and then they release that um, to create your penis, or they may just do an abdominal flap where they just take the tissue from your abdomen to create it. With the phalloplasty, you have a full-size penis. One thing to understand with the phalloplasty is it takes about a year and a half to complete all the surgeries, and how many surgeries you need depends. Some people do it five, other people I've heard had nine surgeries uh, to go through all stages to create it. The last step in the phalloplasty, uh, or second to last depending on when they uh, work on your glands, is when they put their rectal rod implants in. And I've heard from guys that's pretty painful. Um, and it's a long process, you need to be very careful after they place that so that you don't rush things and cause it to become loose or undone. Um, but the guys that I've heard that have had the phalloplasty are very happy with it. I think something that's important for all of us to remember uh, is that when we're talking about body parts, when we're talking about surgeries, to be very respectful, to not say demeaning things, to not make fun of the way that other people's bodies look, because this is our bodies. This is our own individual uh, selves, and it's just part of who we are. And We don't want to be made fun of. We don't want to be teased. We don't want to hear, oh, that one doesn't look good, but that one does, because that's really critical. Uh, and when people are willing to share information about this, it should be respected. If you'd like to learn more about my own metoidoplasty procedure that I had in Belgrade, along with my experience right after surgery and then after, uh, I do have it in a few chapters in my book, Second Son, which was released last year. Uh, you can find it on my website, ryansounds.com, or on amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, other places around the nation and some places in the world. Uh, so you can feel free to check that out. I've only heard wonderful things about it, which is good, because all I want to do is help educate uh, and help you all take the time to make your own decisions for yourself and not because you feel like you have to or that someone else wants you to make these decisions. So take your time, weigh your pros and cons, and decide what is best for you. I hope this helps.